Hello, today I'm standing here in uh, Dachau, Germany to, uh, to review the Dachau concentration camp. This Dachau concentration camp was established in 1938. It was first a munitions factory, but then became the model camp for all the other uh, concentration camps set up by the Germans under Hitler. It's very windy, so I'm going to try to speak up. The building, this, this, uh, this war memorial right behind me was set up by the, uh, by the Holocaust Foundation or the Shoah Foundation uh, so that we would never forget. It is right in front of the, of the, main, uh, of the main building, which, uh, which is sometimes referred to as Canada, where they kept all of the, 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 the prisoners' clothing and all the personal items that, uh, that the prisoners came in with. Moving on to the right over here, we see a red top building. This red top building was a main entrance to Dachau. Everyone who came in and out of here went through those gates. The building was also served as the head or the hub of the, the, the Nazis' uh, paperwork. Everything that the Nazis did with, uh, with, uh, with, with filing and dating things, it was all stored in here. They called it the brain of the camp. Moving over here to the left, there are, there are two bunks. <coughs> this bunk right here is, uh, uh, they're both actually recreation because the original bunks, when, when they were found to be preserved for the, for the uh, memorial camp, they were found to be derelict. So they tore them down and they, they put up these recreations to show people what it was like in the camp. All these trees down here, this line of trees, these were very small trees that the prisoners planted. The Nazis made them plant trees as one of their work efforts, but now the trees have grown. These poplar trees now stand as a monument to the, uh, to the prisoners and everyone who died here. Moving on around this way, you see, you, see, uh, you see the original gate, the original electric gate that was used to keep the prisoners in, and one of the guard towers stands right there. The memorial. As I mentioned earlier, when this, uh, when this memorial was established, they found all the barracks to be derelict, and they had to tear them down. We still have the foundations, though. This is the foundation to barrack number nine. This barrack was used for the, for the priests and ministers, the, the Protestant and Catholic ministers who opposed the Nazis. They kept them all in here because they sectioned out the prisoners into different groups. The Nazis burned so many bodies that they didn't have a place to store the ashes, so they dig these deep pits outside the, the crematoria where they just throw all the ashes. When the Americans came in and discovered this, they discovered these huge pits of ashes. They knew that they had to create a memorial here. So this is the stones that you see resting here today. This is the back lot of Dachau. It's right behind the crematoria area. This gate and this wall right here are the original gates and walls. This used to be a Nazi road where they come in back and they drop off supplies for the functioning of the crematoria. There's also another main road up front, but uh, this one, I'm not quite sure why they needed it, but it's here. This wiring up here is the original wiring. It used to be electrified to keep people from trying to jump over. In the background, you can hear the bell, the remembrance bell. When the Americans came here, there were dead and rotting bodies all over. So, a lot of times they just had to dig holes and push the bodies in, and the graves were never marked. I'm pretty sure this area right back here is one of those unmarked graves in the back lot of Dachau. This is the old execution range. People would line up here and they'd have a gun squad positioned about where the camera is, and they'd shoot them. <coughs> and they designed this little ditch right down in here, because when they shot them in the head, blood would spurt out. And the way they'd have them stand, they'd fall into this ditch, and the blood would just drain out right through here. So they wouldn't have to get their hands dirty. This is an actual crematorium where they used to burn the bodies. These were originally designed to burn dead bodies. The Germans were very sick in that they thought of every meticulous uh, thing that they needed to do to kill these people in the most efficient manner. These are actually designed so that uh, to be coal efficient. When you put the body in and put the coal in, the coal will actually burn the body and then the body will continue burning after it's fallen apart because of the body fat. That way they'd save coal and it cut them down about two-thirds. In England, when they had the Nazi trials, well not the Nazi trials, when they had the neo-Nazi trials for the disbelievers in the Holocaust, the big thing that they used was that there was not enough coal in the camps to burn all the bodies that they said they burned. But today we know that they burned the body fat and that's what kept it going. This is 
This is one of the many notorious gas chambers. It's disguised as a shower. They dropped the Zyklon B through one of these holes, and the capsules would explode, and uh, people would die. Fortunately, this room in Dhaka was never actually used as a killing room. They built it, and then uh, there was, I believe the camp was deliberated before they got a chance to use it. The main crematoria. They were built when the old crematoria didn't have enough room for all the dead bodies. Up above the actual ovens, you see the, the larger beams. One of these larger beams right here was used to hang people along with the gallows located outside of the crematoria. On the wall, you can't see it to the left, there's a memorial for, uh, I think, uh, three British women who uh, were caught and killed in this camp. The Nazis had a tremendous pest problem. Fleas and ticks were rampant. So what they did was they created these little cubicles here for fumigation. They keep all the prisoners' clothing, they uh, keep them in here, they shut the doors, they lock them, and they fumigate them to kill everything on them. It was, a, it was part, of their, uh, part of their daily chore, clothes washing. These chambers lie directly adjacent to the crematoria and the, uh, the gas chamber that was never used. No. This building back here is the main crematorium. Uh, throughout all the years that it was in operation, that's, that chimney right there would be constantly spewing smoke. And the entire area for some say a mile radius smelt of the Swedish, the Swedish burning smell of, of flesh. It was disgusting. The survivors will tell you about it, liberators will tell you about it. It was gross. It's amazing that this place survived um, and it wasn't torn down. Later on this place was used as a displaced persons camp. And the rooms here have been used for other things. So a lot of the uh, a lot of the original artifacts used in the concentration camp are no longer here, because uh, the displaced persons camp lasted actually longer than the concentration camp itself. So that's why uh, many of the things that we see today are, are uh, recreations. But most of the things that you've seen on the video so far have been the genuine item. Like the uh, the ovens are still there. Those are the originals. And everything uh, everything that we saw in there, the fumigation chambers, all of that is the original. Uh, let's move on to the main building, it's the museum. Next, let's take a look at this red top building here, which as we stated earlier, was the central brain and hub of Dachau, as well as the main entrance. This plaque, put in place in the center hall and main entrance of Dachau, was placed after World War II to honor the liberators of the camp. This is the main gate through which all new residents of Dachau would be led through when they entered the camp for the first time. At the top of the gate are embroidered the words, Work brings freedom, in German, suggesting that if they worked hard, they would be treated well. Now let's take a look at the barracks, or the recreated barracks, to see what it was like for the people inside. As with pretty much everything in Dachau, the sleeping quarters were cramped and unsanitary, as you can see in this old photo. Privacy, even while in the restroom, was in short supply. From the survivors I've spoken to, bathrooms that look like this were actually pretty nice for concentration camps. This is a model of the first bunk that was used in Dachau, before there were too many people. As the people increased, however, they had to change the bunks to this style, and they forced the people to sleep on their shoulders, with their backs and their fronts touching the people next to them. That way they could cram people in like sardines. It was very inhumane. Many people actually died in these bunks. Since this video was taken in 2002, there's been a lot of changes to the Dachau Concentration Camp and Museum. Additionally, for the sake of time, there's a lot of things that we haven't covered. If you're ever in the area, I encourage you to visit this important and historic site. Did you know to, uh, they, they thought of increasing the prisoners' morale? So what they'd do is they, they'd write these goofy slogans on the roofs here. Like, work hard for bread. <laughs> Or, aren't you glad you're not in China or something like that? And they'd write these huge slogans on, uh, on the roofs because they thought it increased their uh, prisoners' morale. That was pretty ridiculous. Okay, what was that idea? I don't know. I think the Nazis were just bored. <laughs>